All right, so the cat, um, it's a cold morning. He really wanted to hang out, but um, we have to write some code. So I put him on the bed. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about animating size next. Of course, we can change any parameter over time that we can think of. Um, and for this, we're gonna do something a little different. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of basic geometric shapes. Um, so let's try to make something more interesting. We're gonna make a face that gets animated and we can think of all the parameters of a face that might be able to be changed. Um, this is gonna be a little more complicated, uh, but I know I wanna make this face change to get bigger and smaller overall. I need a speed and I'd like it to bounce around in the X and Y direction. So um, I think first for sure, I need an X and a Y and I'd like to start it in the center. So we can do that. Um, I think I probably want a speed for both X and Y that's independent. So I'm gonna make a variable called speed X. Let's do five and three for this. And then um, let's see, what else do I need? So I know I want its size to change. So I probably wanna have a minimum radius and a max radius and we can use map to um, use maybe its X or its Y position to change that. So I'm gonna say, min radius is 50, max radius is 200. And again, I'm doing these as global variables, so it's very easy for me to change them. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna, let's make it also spin around while we're at it. So I'm gonna give it an angle of zero for now. Okay, and so, you know, I mean, I've already planned this out, so it's a little easier, uh, but this, you know, I'm just thinking through all the parameters that I wanna change for this. Then, um, we're gonna wanna in our draw, so we're gonna change size of things. And um, I think it would be smart for us to calculate, let's start with its radius and we can just make a circle first that changes and then we can add stuff to that. So uh, my radius, I'm gonna use a uh, map and let's use the X position between zero and the width of the screen. And that's gonna go between the min radius and the max radius. And you'll see here in Sublime how it's doing this like autocomplete for me. And this is one of the reasons I really like using a code editor rather than the web editor, um, because I can just hit tab and it autocompletes for me. Um, so I know that this drawing commands are gonna get a little complicated. So I'm gonna make a function for this. So give myself a little room here and I'm gonna call this draw face. And I wanna think about what parameters do I wanna to pass to that? So I probably want X and Y, uh, my angle and my radius. And then I add those here as well. So it's gonna be X, Y, angle, radius and cool. So uh, let's, again, let's start with just a simple circle. So I'm gonna use push and pop. Push and pop will be something you'll use throughout doing animation. Uh, we'll translate to X and Y. So now that's zero and zero. Uh, we might as well add in our, uh, oops, our rotate angle like that. Uh, we'll change that later. And then let's draw the overall sort of face shape first. So I'm gonna do kind of a nice blue, no stroke and a circle at, now we're at zero, zero, and the size will be the radius times two, right? Because the diameter. So again, I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna refresh this and just verify that it's doing what I want it to do. That looks cool. Um, and of course, we haven't changed its position. So then up here in draw, I'm gonna say X plus equals speed X, Y plus equals speed Y. And now it moves and we're seeing it's changing size. If I make this a little bigger and uh, refresh it, maybe it's a little easier to see. But of course we don't have it bouncing yet um, because we haven't added that code. So I'm gonna add that here. Same as before, if X, uh, you know, this is a little more complicated because the radius is changing. Um, I'm just gonna do this simple for now. In the last example, we looked at how we would make it bounce kind of at the edge of an object. Um, so if X is, either passed on the left or the right. We're gonna reverse the speed. And then the same thing for Y, and I could just copy and paste this. And this will be Y. Don't forget to change that to height. Oh, speed X and speed Y. Let's see, we should now see it bounce. Cool, sort of like the old school DVD menu going around. There's that awesome episode of The Office where they're waiting for it to hit the corner. Um, I always think about the person who had probably made that for the show just so that they could like have it happen. Um, 
Okay, cool. So I've got this going and you can see that it's changing size. So we're using map and the X position to make this thing get bigger or smaller. Uh, from here now, we can add some features. So I'm actually gonna go ahead for now and let's just not make it move because it's gonna be hard for us to see. And um, let's add, so this is a good place where you'd want some comments, I think. So this will be the overall face shape. Let's go ahead and add the eyes together. And then um, I'm gonna copy paste some stuff from my example so you don't have to watch me do this whole thing. Um, so I'm gonna make those white. And I know I want a circle. Now this is where drawing out on some paper would be really smart. So like some post-its or your sketchbook or scrap paper or whatever, because thinking in numbers here is really hard um, and drawing it on paper makes it really easy. Uh, but I know I'm now referencing the middle of my circle um, and I wanna move my eyes over and up a little bit in both directions. So if I do um, one, I can kind of reverse the directions and I'll keep the other. So my extraction, I've kind of experimented and I found that doing um, radius divided by 1.75 puts me about where I want and negative radius divided by four moves it up kind of into the spot that I like. And this is totally from trial and error. Uh, and then the size of my eyes is gonna be the radius divided by two. And the nice thing here now is, is that the face changes size, those eyes will also shrink and enlarge. Um, so that's in one direction, that would be to the left, and this would be to the right. So again, I'm gonna run it. There's my eyeballs. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste my pupils. So I got pupils here. These are also dynamically resized with, uh, with this. I'm using um, pupil diameter is a new variable that I'm using map for this. It just makes it a little cleaner. Um, and then let me add my mouth in. And my mouth, lots of ways that you can do this, but my mouth is an ellipse and the height of the mouth will open and close as it moves around. So let's save this. <laughs> Here's my freaked out little face. And now if I add back in um, the speed change, we should see its size animate. So I have it reversed too, so that the uh, pupils get smaller as the face gets bigger and the mouth gets wider. And then as the face gets smaller, the mouth closes and the pupils kind of get bigger. Um, and you could play with this and kind of get the emotion you want from it. And then there's one more, you know, we have it, We have this angle of rotation in here, so we might as well do that. Angle plus equals radians. Um, I don't know, let's try one and see how that looks. And now because we're using matrix transformations, we don't have to figure out all the crazy math for where the eyeballs and the mouth and stuff go. This whole thing is sort of, you know, we're drawing it statically and then we're rotating the canvas basically when we draw it. So it makes it really easy for us to draw these complex shapes. Um, so, so far we've done a lot of geometric things, but you can use those to make some really cool, complicated kinds of things here. Um, imagining adding more of these or more features, maybe eyebrows that go up and down or a tongue that comes out, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so that's size. And again, you know, we're just applying these same animation ideas of change over time. And the next one we'll do color. Um, and then we'll start applying these to some other things.